agreed that the Council will now consider the motion on fair deal for renters proposed by Councillors Jones and Hoggs. Can I ask Councillor Jones and Councillor Hogg to move and second the motion in their names? I formally propose the motion with the agreed amendments. Seconded. An amendment to the motion has been circulated in the chamber. Can I ask Councillor Ellis and Senior to move and second their amendment? Uh, Madam Mayor, I beg to move the, the amendment. Thank you. Councillor, Jones. Councillor Jones has requested 10 minutes. I, uh, I first came across of investing solutions and fresh start housing in March through constituency casework. Both names were cropping up very regularly in relation to complaints about poor housing. Investing Solutions is a property company and Fresh Start describes itself as a charity which specialises in housing the homeless. I did some investigation. Fresh Start Housing finds homeless people accommodation by passing them to Investing Solutions, a company which sources properties from the private sector. In the absence of any provision for housing single homeless people in the borough, this model might appear to be a noble one, if it weren't for the detail of how this is done and what money is made. Both organisations are based in the same industrial unit in Battersea and are run by or were set up by the same person, a man called Samir Patel. Fresh Start functions like a shop window for, for a property company. The charity feeds investing solutions with clients. The properties found that I have seen are in a very poor state. Mould, damp, filth, no heating, no hot water. One tenant had to remove 28 bags of rubbish, including the bodies of two dead cats, before he could move in. It's a very profitable model. For each homeless person housed in a single room, the council paid Investing Solutions up to £260 in housing benefit per week. Investing Solutions was housed up to four people in one property, equivalent to an income of up to £4,000 per property per month. The amount charged by the landlord would be around half that, because the quality of the uh, property is so poor, allowing Investing Solutions to make as much as £24,000 profit per property per year. Over the last two years, Wandsworth has paid Investing Solutions over £2.1 million. It's a very nice little earner for Samir Patel, but not such a good deal for the taxpayer who funds it. I raised my concerns, contrary to the earlier insinuations, about the condition of an Investing Solutions property with the Council in April, via email and then in person. That case was complicated by the fact that the tenant was allegedly being subjected to retaliatory eviction for having requested repairs. In June, the council confirmed that they considered Fresh Start and Investing Solutions as, and I quote, the same organisation for the purposes of the housing benefit they paid out. The council's housing and environmental departments received complaints one tenant was told that to deal with his rat infestation, he should pay a private exterminator and he should be grateful to have a roof over his head. On June the 2nd, I requested a list of all the houses managed by Investing Solutions. That was also omitted from the earlier insinuations. My request was ignored for over a month and then declined. No routine investigations were carried out. Indeed, over the last five years, Wandsworth has inspected, on average, just two Investing Solutions properties per year across 194 benefit claims. Five weeks ago, the BBC's News at 6, News at 10, Radio 4 and the Evening Standard covered this scandal. But although the BBC finds this housing model worthy of investigation, Wandsworth still has not. Paying out £2.1 million without first having a quick look at what you're buying is a cavalier use of public funds 
which has resulted in one man getting very rich on taxpayers' money and many people being housed in substandard homes. Wandsworth's record on supporting this landlord is much worse than any, London, any other London borough. Of the 5.2 million paid to investing solutions over the past two years by seven London boroughs, Wandsworth paid out almost half, four times what neighbouring Merton and Lambeth paid, and 15 times what Hammersmith and Fulham paid. According to a former employee of Investing Solutions, this was a deliberate business decision on behalf of Samir Patel, who I'm told targeted this borough because he knew he could rent out substandard properties without inspections and make lots of money. Faced with a rip-off of this size and a potential proliferation of poor housing of this scale, a case-by-case -case response, which is all this council is offering, is not good enough. The excuse that they didn't know is either mendacious or indicative of a housing department in disarray. Their attempts to blame, as you did earlier, individual councillors when the blame lies squarely with their administration is cynical. And your complacency is clear when you told us earlier that a, hou that a housing fa uh, issue that was raised recently had been satisfactorily resolved. That's a man, uh, his partner, and a four-week-old baby in one room, accommodation that is supposedly for a single person. The room is so inadequately heated that it never reaches more than 15 degrees Celsius, which, according to their health worker, is lower than the minimum required, and she claims the baby's health is at risk. You claim it's satisfactorily resolved. There are a thousand homeless families in Wandsworth this Christmas, and this council has its eyes and its ears closed. Councillor Thomas. Madam Mayor, councillors, we've just had a very disturbing account tonight uh, of the condition that uh, private rented tenants are living in in Wandsworth today. But the key question I want to concentrate on is what the council has been doing about this and whether its response is adequate. As the Labour motion points out, this is not the first time we've debated the issue of conditions in the private rented sector in this chamber. Just in July, Labour moved a motion calling for the council to make sure all landlords who receive housing benefit maintain decent standards and to introduce a licensing scheme in areas of proven bad practice. Since then, I'm sorry to say we've heard barely a squeak from the council. The money the council hand, has handed out in housing benefit for properties rented out through investing solutions is taxpayers' money. Under the 2004 Housing Act, the Council has a duty, a duty, not a power, to keep housing conditions under review and to carry out inspections if it has reason to believe that there may be a risk to health and safety. Examples of the kind of things covered by this provision include rats, damp, and properties without central heating. So, since the concerns about investing solutions were first brought to light, what has the cabinet member done to inspect their other properties to ensure that these are hazard free? Where is the council hotline for tenants to ring if their landlord refuses to make repairs or subjects tenants to threats of retaliatory eviction? Is the cabinet member certain that there are not other cases out there either connected to investing solutions or concerning other large-scale landlords in the borough. It's no good him wringing his hands and saying the situation is not of his making or that, there's, or that there's nothing that he can do. Let me be clear. The council already has the power to inspect and take enforcement action under the legislation I've just mentioned. It should be using these powers proactively to prevent exploitation and ensure the taxpayer gets good value for money. The same also applies to bringing forward a licensing scheme. 
since July when this council, everyone in this room probably, voted uh, for that motion. What action has the Cabinet member taken uh, to investigate this and to bring forward proposals? Was he perhaps proposing to leave the job to the BBC or to ask investing solutions themselves to put forward proposals? Extraordinarily, I note that he seems to have uh, waited for investing solutions themselves to contact the council rather than seeking contact with them. The whole strategy seems to be simply to keep quiet and hope the thing will go away. I think it's telling that tonight uh, the members opposite have essentially voted to try to suppress this debate. And the amendment is telling as well, because the amendment deletes the last part of the Labour motion. So if you vote for the amendment, you're going to be voting against initiating could, more could active policy Could I make an intervention, please? Could I, no, could I, I'm sorry. Please, could I make an intervention? No, I'm not going to accept an intervention, sorry. You will be voting against initiating a more active policy of inspections for poor standard private rented properties. You'll be voting against stopping road landlords and letting agents from operating in our borough. You'll be voting against broadening landlord licensing to drive up standards. You'll be voting for a watering down amendment. You will be welcoming the housing and planning bill, uh, which enables uh, <coughs> rogue landlords to be banned. Interestingly though, I note that citizens' advice notes that this would only mean that only serious criminal cases and cases passed from a magistrate's court for trial or sentencing uh, could be banned, and that actually they'd prefer a landlord licensing scheme, because they think it would be more effective. Madam Mayor, the party opposite is fond of talking about responsibility. It's time they took some. It matters if vulnerable people in our borough are not able to stand up for themselves and suffering in appalling housing conditions. No excuses about affordability or funding can get away from this. It would not be right uh, for the cabinet member to hide behind officers uh, indeed, officers who indeed are very hard working uh, and do uh, a good job of trying to implement this administration's broad policies. The fact is the cases we've seen and heard have happened on councillor Councillor Ellis's watch and his response has been both totally ineffective and shockingly complacent. We should all be ashamed of the failures that have occurred and so should he. Can I ask I you to wind call down? on him. Yeah, I will wind up. I call on him to take responsibility for this shocking episode and to resign. Yeah. 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 Councillor Hogg. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wasn't expecting to speak this evening. <laughs> if you insist, Madam Mayor. Um, Wandsworth Council um, is not working hard enough to get a fair deal for renters. Um, and it doesn't seem to understand these renters' lives. Um, basically, it's not willing to get involved to level the playing field for renters. And this was shown most recently in the Investing Solutions scandal. This, as we've heard, is the Wandsworth-based letting agent that... Madam Mayor... The Wandsworth-based letting agency, which took five and a half million pounds in housing benefit from a charity which housed the homeless, 2.1 million pounds of that was paid by Wandsworth Council. Crisis, the housing charity, described this arrangement as a new low. Several of their properties used to house vulnerable people were unsuitable due to lack of heating, hot water, damp, and rats. The BBC reports the company earned 11,568 pounds profit per year from one Wandsworth property alone. We put these facts to the officers and to the Tory cabinet member at the housing committee. The response, as we've heard and seen tonight, was staggeringly complacent. There's nothing to see here. This is business as usual. No further investigation is required because it's not illegal. And, and that's the point. It may not be illegal, but it's wrong. In a properly regulated housing market, one with some decency and goodwill, exploitation of this kind would not have happened. You know, renters are getting more squeezed by the day. Uh, local examples have appeared in the press recently. You may have been aware of the cupboard offering an authentic Harry Potter experience in Sisters Avenue in Battersea. I think that was 500 pounds a month for a space under a stairs. Um, Chelsea, uh, who's a renter in her 20s, 
pay £700 a month for a flat share in Clapham. Uh, she says, I spend so much on rent, I feel as if I'm living in poverty. Anna, a teacher, pays £720 a month to share with five others in Balham. I pay more than half my salary on rent, she says. I just don't have a chance to save any money. I mean, that's a teacher. You know, th these are people we expect to be respected in the community and to be properly housed. And, you know, Anna, the teacher, will move out a year later with her belongings. The landlord will be £150,000 richer because property prices went up more than 20% in Ballam last year. So it's not just about income, it's about net worth. And, of course, that increase is trapping more families renting, perhaps forever. Um, Zishan of Wallace Close in Battersea was paying three times the rent to a private landlord as the council tenant who lived next door to him. And this was actually five years ago. He asked me about home ownership scheme, saying he wanted a house for his family so he could have some peace of mind. And his life moved on. He had a child. His rent went up. Uh, he started working two jobs. And a couple of years later, I was watching cricket around his house, and he said he'd heard from his landlord that he was going to be evicted. Uh, his wife was pregnant again by this stage, and they became homeless. Last year, the council placed him in temporary accommodation in Thornton Heath, five miles away from where he lived in Battersea, uh, I bumped into him in the street and he said it takes an hour and a half to drop the children off in the morning, the same on the way home, and it was taking a dreadful toll on his wife and children. And last month, in, a one, in its one and only offer, uh, the council showed him a private rented property out in Croydon, even further from his life in Battersea, and now, pending the outcome of a review, Zishan and his family will be homeless and with no support for Christmas. And it's important to remember Zishan is just a regular suburban dad. There were thousands of people like him, and there still are, at the mercy of events. So we must realize if we don't give a fair deal for renters, we're just feeding our homeless crisis. It's the number one cause of homelessness um, dropping out of the private rented sector. More than 1,000 local families with children will be homeless this Christmas um, in our community. We need to live up to our responsibilities to regulate the housing market to level the playing field with inspections, help with tenancy deposits, banning rogue landlords, ending letting agents fees, and pushing for longer and more stable contracts for families through a London-wide letting agency. This council just doesn't seem to understand the pressures that renters face, and Anna, Chelsea, and particularly Zishan need our helping hand. Uh, Wandsworth Council is not working hard enough to get a fair deal for renters. Councillor Ellis. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I will be brief. Uh, first of all, on the uh, investing solutions, I think the deputy leader uh, dealt with most of the, uh, the points that were raised again in, in the debate, and I don't really think much will be served by uh, going back over them again. Um, I, I would certainly agree that having a charity uh, and a letting agent operating from the same premises does seem a little strange. Um, I believe the, uh, the, the Finance Department are having discussions with the Charity Commission uh, about this. Um, clearly, if Councillor Jones or indeed any of the other councillors spoke this evening uh, have any more knowledge, uh, no doubt they will pass that on. Um, there's no suggestion at the moment that what is being done is illegal, but I would agree it does seem a bit odd. Um, I think we also have to accept the fact that this particular uh, lettings agency does specialise in a very uh, hard to let uh, sector. Um, it's single uh, men uh, over the age of 35. Many, not all, but many of them uh, will have been street homeless, many will have come from prisons or, or institutions, many will have uh, alcohol and, uh, and substance abuse problems. Very few private landlords, in all honesty, uh, would welcome such people as tenants. That may be unfair, but it's a fact of life. Um, whatever the faults of this particular agency, and I don't hold any candle for them, whatever, the council has never referred any client to them. Uh, or, or I think, I think it, the answer, I think, they said one in, in 2012. Um, so, yes, we've referred one client to them in, in the 13 years that they've been in operation. I hold absolutely no candle for them, uh, but what I will say is they are providing accommodation for, I think at the moment, about 82 clients uh, who otherwise would not receive uh, accommodation because, uh, as, uh, as has already been stated, um, single men over the age of 35 uh, are not regarded as, as priorities. Um, if the members offers it feel that they should be, then they can propose a change to our lettings policy. It will be unique in the country, 
but they can certainly do that if they wish. Similarly, if they believe it should be the case in the country that single men over the age of 35 should be regarded as priorities, they should put forward, through perhaps their own Member of Parliament uh, in Tooting, an amendment to the Housing and Planning Bill that's currently going through uh, to suggest that. I don't know whether they're intending to do either of those things, but if they do uh, and they get their way, well, then fair enough. Um, with regard to the actual motion itself, uh, we, ha we have put forward uh, uh, an amendment to it, um, simply because, you know, looking at sort of C1, ensure uh, housing benefit claims are genuine. Well, we do. I mean, you don't really need to say that we, uh, we do that because it is the law of the land. Uh, as uh, Councillor Cook said earlier, uh, the particular legislation was passed in 2008, uh, which requires us by law to pay, or not just us, but any council by law, to pay uh, housing benefit at the local housing allowance level, which is set by the Department of Work and Pensions, not by ones with council, uh, to pay that uh, if the person qualifies, regardless of the, uh, the nature of the accommodation that they happen to be in. All it has to be do is, is, is suitable for their requirements. Now, we may argue that that perhaps is wrong. And indeed, the Housing and Planning Bill uh, is looking at uh, one of the, the, the things that's in it, uh, is looking at correcting that situation, something I would support. But un unfortunately, we have to follow the law. Whether people like it or not, we have to abide by the law. There is no suggestion at all that uh, the, the law has in any respect been broken. As for ones with counsel being regarded as a soft touch, uh, I'll, remi I'll remind you of that when you start accusing us of being hard and cutting everything left, right and centre. I never realised that we were such a soft touch. We've got away with this for so long without, uh, without you noticing. What, you know, what a lot of nonsense. Then, then let's look at, again, uh, ensure more active policy of inspections. Well, you don't actually know how active we are at the moment. Uh, the, fact of the, the fact of the matter... The fa Shut up, please, Councillor. You really are a nuisance. You know... Well, really. Really. I, I should be full of Christmas cheer, but you do make it very difficult, I have to confess. Um, this particular agency uh, uh, manages uh, 82 properties, or, or on behalf of 82 clients. This year, I, I believe, there have been three complaints. Across the borough, there are probably, we don't know exactly how many private landlords there are, because they're not required to be regulated, as the opposition would like, probably around about 45,000, 50,000 private landlords. They, they house a third of our population. Last year, there were just over 700 complaints. I agree, that's 700 too many. But in the great scheme of things, it does actually show that the vast majority of tenants are happy. If they're not happy, they will complain. We know that. We know that. Or they will have, they will have councillors who will complain on their behalf. Uh, then we're told that we've, we've got to stop rogue landlords uh, from operating in our borough. Well, you, we can pass a motion to say you mustn't operate in our borough. Uh, but how's that going to stop them? It's a, it's a slightly ridiculous uh, thing to say. What we can do is we can support the uh, provisions in the Housing and Planning Bill, uh, which will put uh, penalties uh, on uh, 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 landlords, which are already being dismissed. I mean, the, the bill hasn't even become law, and it's already being rubbished. Um, this is the strongest piece of legislation against ro low rogue landlords that we've had, uh, I think, uh, in living memory. Um, broaden landlord licensing to drive up standards. Well, they love to license everything. They, they absolutely adore licensing things. Um, we, I think it was quoted to us that uh, Newham, which has got a dreadful how, uh, private rented sector, and another one is at Croydon have done it. What isn't mentioned, of course, is the other 30 boroughs haven't. Um, and finally, investigate the creation of a not-for-profit letting agent. Well, nobody's actually stopping anybody setting one of those up. If Councillor Jones and her friends wants to set up a not-for-profit letting agent, let them get on with it. I mean, I, I really can't understand how they have to feel they have to have permission from the council to do this. If you want to set up a letting agent, go ahead and do it. Councillor Senior.
making them licensed if they already do the job properly? What is the point of charging them fees and possibly driving them out of the sector if they already do a good job? Instead, we should be focusing our efforts as a new bill gives us on those rogues who give the sector such a bad name. And let's also look at what the other good things the council has been doing in this area. The literally dozens of properties in poor condition that are brought back into housing use every year through the efforts of the council and its staff. The handful, admittedly it's a handful of absolute horrible eyesore properties that council brings back into use every single year. The dozens of properties the council is building on its own estates. You're way beyond the existing Hidden Homes programme uh, for all sorts of different categories of tenures and the hundreds, if not thousands, of new homes that are be gaining planning approval and more importantly are being built because it's not just giving approval saying that sounds nice, you have actually to build it. And as Councillor McDermott rightly said earlier on, that's what's happening here. Yes, if there's a problem, we ought to go in and sort it out. But there's no point whatsoever in saying regulation is the be-all and end-all, regulate everybody and you drive everything out. Councillor McKinney. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just one second. Thank you. I would like to also talk on the private rental sector and reply, in a sense, to um, the party, uh, to Councillor Ellis. Um, we have, yes, this is the 35 plus single men are a difficult category, but we have a responsibility in Wandsworth because we have got Wandsworth Prison and it's mainly remand but it does house inmates waiting to be returned into Wandsworth who have completed long sentences elsewhere and um, in a sense these are prime people for investing solutions as you say um, but and also as you say they they need support for their drug the mental health the alcohol problems and they need good housing and the trouble is, I'm not quite sure they get good housing. And okay, they're not a priority. I do understand what you're saying there. But the, um, I'd like to talk, read from a recent housing summit, which, was, um, provi which provided an opportunity for advice and community organizations and public sector staff to come together and to comment on housing issues within the Wandsworth Borough. These are all sort of um, voluntary sector people who came together to talk about what are the main concerns they have with the private rental sector? And this is, this is, this is a list. Um, private rental sector increased evictions, increased large families' homelessness, um, shrinking housing benefits, um, temporary accommodation out of borough, too many schemes from government, unregulated landlords and unlawful evictions, increased tenancy for landlords to split up residences into houses in multiple occupant, occupation, um, the most vulnerable, unable to access accommodation, limited housing stock, landlords not accepting tenants on benefits, overcrowding, disrepair, and I can go on. It's a huge list, and that's, that was from the Housing Summit on the 9th of September 2015. And I think what my point is, is that these are voluntary organisations that no one's worth like the back of their hand because they regularly get people from Wandsworth coming to them for their help. And... What I would like to propose is that the council work alongside these professionals who see such misery daily in terms of people who seek their assistance with their housing nightmares. Professionals such as the Citizens Advice Bureau who can inform the council of the substandard properties from the stories they hear daily. The voluntary sector has valuable information about residents and as you say, there's around 40,000 renting households in Wandsworth, which is a huge figure to monitor. So I, I would like to suggest that actually by bringing in representation from the voluntary sector who to work with and talk with in an infor information gathering meetings regularly, which doesn't happen at the moment necessarily, they will help you to monitor the 40,000 because they have direct contact with them. And yes, I bring back Newham Council and Croydon, which yes, I did quote in July. Um, yes, they have licensed their PRS, but what, what we found in, in response, in looking at the summit and the housing summit, is that it's good to have the housing and planning bill, but actually what these voluntary sector organisations actually would prefer is a landlord licensing scheme. 
because they see so many cases of people still living in poor quality homes. So it's, it's the actual getting out to them, because at the moment, the only time the council will hear of these poor quality homes is if they are reported to them. And the people who report to them are the tenants. And some of the landlords, the poor landlords, the rogue landlords, will probably make it really difficult for these poor tenants to actually report. So part of the agreed verbal contract with a rogue landlord could be along the lines of complain and you're out. So it's very difficult for vulnerable people, like the, the 35 plus, like the um, inmates coming out of Wandsworth to be re located into Wandsworth because they can't go back to their local contacts because they'll be recidivism all over again. So we need a bigger way of actually reporting the substandard housing in Wandsworth rather than just waiting for the complaints to come through, but actually having, like Newham, 51 people who are now paid for by the fines and by the licensing fees to go out and have a look at the private rental sector. I'm not sure we, we can just rely on people complaining to actually fulfill the duty of the residents. Thank you. The matter now before the Council is the amendment proposed by Councillor Ellis and seconded by Councillor Senior to the motion at item 18 concerning a fair deal for renters. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the amendment. Can we show of hands again, please? And those against? Uh, the motion is the amendment is carried through 3519 uh, now the motion as amended is that the same numbers 